Hey everybody, what's up? So I recently had a discussion with somebody else on their video. It's actually a discussion I've had several times recently, both on forums, with people. It seems like I can't get away from it. The video wasn't my fault, and it's actually somebody I watch pretty frequently, and he watches me sometimes. He leaves comments here and there. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to tilt anybody either way. It's just a discussion. And this video isn't designed to beat anybody up. It's more of a let's discuss and let's think about logically kind of thing. Modifying your guns. There's a group of people out there that believe you shouldn't modify your carry handgun for a multitude of reasons. Now there's some important things in there, but the main thing I'm going to talk about is the lawyer argument, or the litigation argument, or whatever you want to call it. Don't modify your gun because when you go to court, the, def the defense lawyer or the prosecutor is going to tear you apart and the judge is going to rule against you just because you modified your gun. I feel like this argument is a fallacy. I can tell you from a law enforcement perspective and an investigative perspective that the police don't take apart your gun to look at the internals. They don't. It's tampering with evidence. No police officer doing his job properly is going to pull your gun apart. The lab might pull your gun apart, but if a cop is pulling your gun apart at the scene, uh, that is silly. And to my law enforcement brothers and sisters, that's really dumb. That's how you get evidence thrown out. No one's going to take apart your gun at the scene and be like, oh, he's got a ghost connector in that Glock, or he's got a skimmer trigger, or man, this recoil spring's lighter, or he put a steel guide rod in there. No one's going to do that. That's absolutely ridiculous. It has nothing to do about anything. The major points people hit are the trigger, or I don't even know what else it could be, some sort of thing. I can tell you with absolute certainty a modification that will get you in trouble is modifying the sear on your weapon so it becomes fully automatic and or scratching your serial numbers off. Those two things right there will get you in prison. Doesn't matter if you get acquitted of murder or not, you're going to jail for illegally modifying a firearm. It's going to happen. It's an absolute. It's going to happen. Those two modifications aside, though, there's having a lighter trigger or night sights or a flashlight on your gun is not going to be a factor in your criminal trial or your civil trial. Someone can try and make that argument. And another thing is, too, there's a lot of people that, the, the few people that do go and listen to a courtroom proceeding or listen to lawyers argue, there are plenty of people out there that will hear it argued and either not see the end result or just because it's brought up, oh, oh, he brought that up. Let me tell you something. A defense attorney is going to try to suppress every piece of evidence there is and acquit their client. So if you are on the prosecution side and you're a police officer or you're an armed citizen, you were cleared of the murder, it was, a, it was a clean shoot, but you're facing the defense attorney now, they're going to try and get everything thrown out. They're going to throw everything they possibly have at the bench to try and get them to suppress the evidence. That's, that's going to happen regardless. You could, have a, a, you could have anything. That's what they're going to do. Now, as far as the prosecutor goes, they're going to be on shaky ground bringing up, oh, he had night sights and a modified trigger. Okay, it's easier for me to shoot that way. Argument over. <laughs> it, it makes the gun easier for me to shoot, so if I'm in a self-defense situation, my shots are more accurate. The only way that defense will bite you in the ass is if you shoot somebody that you didn't intend to shoot. Other than that, all these other arguments are silly. They're, they're, they don't hold any merit. They're weightless. Before echoing other people, before saying, hey man, you really don't want to do that, and they're like, yes I do, why? <laughs> and you're like, well, you don't want to do that because if you ever have to use it and you go to trial, they're going to say you modify it and you're going to go to jail. First of all, unless you're a sitting justice or a lawyer, you don't know that. Um, I'm not even saying this is legal advice. In fact, this isn't legal advice. 
there's probably some district attorney that's some a really big asshole in some state that I'll never go to that's going to say, hey, we're going to use this too to try and get him on this. Save any in stone laws. Modifying your gun is not illegal. If you want a lighter trigger in it, it's fine. If you want to put night sights on it, it's fine. And the reason I say, especially the lighter trigger and the night sights, you can't control what gun people buy. If I have this gun right here, right, it's got a four and a half pound trigger in single action and night sights. What's to say that I can't purchase this and use this for self defense? What about the VP9? You can get a standard or an LE package. What's the difference? The night sights. You can't tell me that I can't have night sights. It, there's, you, where, where's that argument coming from? You can't, because I can put these night sights on the gun. I can change the sights. Oh, no, I've modified the firearm. Yeah. I can get it. I can get it any way I want it. What are you, what are you getting at? <laughs> you know, what does the device that I'm using to aim matter? What if I put a red dot, uh, mini red dot on the top of it? Who cares? <laughs> you know, it doesn't increase the lethality of the weapon. You know, the trigger on this gun here is about four and a half pounds also. What's the difference between this and a Smith & Wesson Sigma? I just chose to buy the VP9. You know, what difference does it make? You know, choosing to buy a Glock over a Smith & Wesson Shield or a Smith & Wesson even. Some of the M&Ps have a six to seven pound trigger pull or Glock has a five pound trigger pull. Are you gonna tell me that I need to buy this, the Smith & Wesson because the trigger's heavier? No, you're not gonna do that. It's stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just, I, I don't know where these people get these arguments from. It's not, they're not substantiated, they're not legitimate. If they were substantiated, there would be case law and laws following court decisions. Or there would be a precedent established that would be widely circulated by the NRA, ILA, or other organizations saying, hey guys, we're losing a lot in court over this because this, you know? So hey, probably don't do that. Don't listen to the guys in the gun shops or some of the, there's even important trainers out there telling you not to modify your guns. I'm not saying the guys that are saying, hey, keep it simple, stupid, don't modify your gun, just learn to run it, that's different. But the people that are saying, hey, don't modify your gun because you're going to lose in court, that argument doesn't hold water. It's not legitimate. It's not a thing. There's nothing in any criminal or penal law that is going to find you liable. Now, this is dependent on your stupid states for those socialist-ass states where they control how much soda you can drink and how many times you can inhale and all this other stuff. Know your local laws. But if it's not in stone, if it's not written in the penal law, then it's not a thing. So don't just take people's word for it and then stick yourself in a corner because now you have a gun that has, it's the only gun you can afford, it has a nine pound trigger and you, you can change it and make it better but you're not gonna now and you still suck with it. Don't do that to yourself. You know, I'm not a lawyer, I can't tell you what to do but it's not a legitimate thing. <laughs> it's not something law enforcement looks for. They don't have, I'm almost positive they don't have trigger gauges at the lab. And the reason I say this with confidence is the labs are so busy with other stuff that they don't have time to run all that stuff. They run the ballistics test and test for fingerprints. That's what they do at the lab. You know, it, they don't, we don't write on the request when we send a gun in, hey, can you check the trigger poundage and all this other stuff? They don't have time for that shit. They're not going to do it. The lab is so busy. So busy. So, just, you know, check up with your lawyers, you know, do what you got to do, fact find, do your own research, all that other stuff. You know, you can quote me whatever trainer they are, especially if it's someone who's never been a cop or never been in the military telling people that don't do this because of this. But, and I'm not, I'm not trying to come down on people sending this information out. It's, the same thing as 22 is the most lethal round, that statistic doesn't exist. I've repeated that before. I'm an idiot. I should have looked. And that's 99% of the problem. And that's why a lot of people believe all these libtards all the time is because people keep circulating bad gab. You're getting bad gab, you hear it, you don't fact check it, and then repeat it. You know? Just because somebody reputable says it doesn't mean it's correct. So do your research, dig deep in there, 
look at the case law and make your decision after that. But honestly, I can tell you as an investigator that it's not something we look for. We don't check the trigger poundage. Because <laughs> you can go buy a, a Nighthawk or a, a Dan Wesson or a, you know, Ed Brown or whatever. You can go buy one of those guns. There's nothing saying that you cannot use that for self-defense anywhere. You know? So... Just try to look at things objectively and do fact finding because you're you're helping yourself out and you're helping other people out around you. It's very important. Don't, don't just accept everything everybody's saying is gospel. You know, you gotta you gotta go out there and, and check it out. You know? I could even put out something that's incorrect, and I'm not saying I haven't before. That twenty two caliber thing being the most lethal round, I said that before. Um, I'm sure there's other things I've said before that weren't hundred percent accurate, but I make sure I go back and correct myself. So just do your own research, look into it, and be informed. That's what's important. Be informed. Thanks for watching. Take care. Take care of each other. Stay safe. And support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America.